Manchester City's tactics next season will be very intriguing as they always are but they've got a couple new signings in Erlen Haaland and Julian Alvarez but with Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus looking like they're on their way out they will need to sign a couple more replacements so in this video we are going to be looking for those replacements but also kind of predict their tactics see how these new signings can fit into their new system next season so in this video that's exactly what we're going to do if you are new or you haven't yet make sure you are subscribed make sure you like this video Yo, leave a comment any recommendations which team shall i do next but for now let's sort out manchester city yes people welcome back we are back with the tactics finally we will have a 4-3-3 after well <laughs> after this video as we are coming towards the end of the football manager cycle these videos are a little less focused on the actual tactic but more just talking about football in general who should manchester city sign for an example but as always in a tactic video we will be looking and talking about the football tactic so as expected explained in the video Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko are likely to leave Manchester City so in this game I've moved them I've kicked them out of Manchester City both of them funnily enough are at Arsenal so if we go to Arsenal let's go to the Arsenal team there yeah. so we see both Zinchenko at Arsenal they've put him as the attacking midfielder and Gabriel Jesus here as well who is currently their right winger and that is because they've actually signed Edison wow this is a very very dangerous Arsenal team this year but he's not the only person to leave Raheem Sterling is also rumored to leave Manchester City now we didn't necessarily have to find a replacement for Raheem Sterling mainly because Julian Alvarez is already there the two positions that we are actually looking to replace is the left back for Zinchenko but also a holding midfielder as now Fernandinho is gone and Calvin Phillips has been rumored to join Manchester City those have been our outgoings Raheem Sterling Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko but who do we sign now Manchester City is heavily linked with Calvin Phillips they might not get Calvin Phillips so I did find one alternative for Calvin Phillips and similar with Mark Cucurella as well they are heavily linked with Mark Cucurella from Brighton they might be priced out and they will have to look for an alternative in case that deal falls through so that is exactly what I've done let's look into those so the first person we're going to look at is Calvin Phillips here we can see his profile a profile that I have created the data is from Y Scout and every Every digit well apart from the percentages are in per 90 so for an example successful defensive actions he has completed 11.84 per 90 so this is Calvin Phillips and the metrics that I've chosen are the ones that Calvin Phillips really do well in and likely reasons for why Manchester City are heavily interested so to clarify the reason why I chose some of these metrics some of them are what Calvin Phillips really really excel in and some of them are what's important for Manchester City's tactics so we have Calvin Phillips Phillips we can see where he operates as well in those deeper areas which is likely what Manchester City are looking for when it comes to replacing Fernandinho but also someone that can rotate or be a backup to Rodri. Calvin Phillips really excels when it comes to successful defensive actions but also with the defensive duels as well he is completing 10.08 per 90 completing 60% of those and to put that into context that is way above the average when comparing to other central midfielders around the top five leagues in Europe. Possession adjusted interceptions as well Calvin Phillips is completing 6.86 which is above the average passes now these aren't necessarily a heavy possession based team which is one of the reasons why Calvin Phillips doesn't have a ridiculous high amount of passes but he does complete a majority of those passes he's very very confident on the ball and with his passes he likes to play forward passes he likes to complete long passes which is one thing that I found really interesting in Calvin Phillips he completes 6.98 long passes per game with a 57.78 completion ratio which you wouldn't necessarily link to Manchester City's game but I found that very interesting when it comes to Calvin Phillips he likes to pass it forward and we can see that with his progressive passes and passes into the final third now looking at the attributes provided by F breath we can see for the pressures as well Calvin Phillips likes to put pressure on the opponent's midfielders or on the opponent's players in general and we can see where he likes to put those pressures on as well in Europe there's not many that compete with Calvin Phillips in terms of successful pressures in the mid third defensive third and just in successful pressures in general but number one is Calvin Phillips and we all know the type of player Calvin Phillips is the alternative for Calvin Phillips for me has to be Ismail Benacer this is a central midfielder that I really really like he was key for AC Milan in central midfield with Kessie in their Scudetto win he's a player that I found to be very very similar to Calvin Phillips now there's going to be a lot of players with very very decent statistics but 
but that's not what we're looking for we're looking for someone that is similar to calvin phillips or someone that would have a similar profile to calvin phillips and we can see that as well successful defensive actions he performs near enough the same as calvin phillips i believe it's just just below but 11.04 is still very very high especially when you compare it to the average around the top five leagues in europe defensive duels he completes slightly less than calvin phillips but he is more successful with the interceptions possession adjusted a fairly same with calvin phillips again but now when it comes to the passing you can see that he completes more passes and he's more successful with it as well but playing with ac milan or playing for ac milan he is in a more possession based team when it comes to the forward passing he completes more forward passes likely because he's seeing more of the ball as well but with the long passes it slightly drops still 5.57 is a fairly high number and he completes a majority of those 60 percent completion rate when it comes to the passes in the final third and the progressive passes he does outperform calvin phillips in both as well as the accurate percentages but again it's more likely that he's seeing more of the ball and he's able to attempt more of these passes but he is a similar player to calvin phillips i believe and if i was manchester city i probably would opt out of calvin phillips and sign ishmael benesser he's 24 decent age and you can see with the pressures as well he's a fairly similar similar player to calvin phillips and again you can find players with similar stats to calvin phillips but when it comes to stuff like pressures you will notice there's a big difference between calvin phillips and a lot of other players that do have similar stats but my pick out of the two would be ishmael benesser he's the cheaper option but i also believe he might be might be just that better player for manchester city in my opinion so next what's to look for a fullback for manchester city Jao Cancelo performed absolutely fantastically last season so it's unlikely that you are going to find another fullback with very with fairly comparable statistics but what i did do is look at all the fullbacks for manchester city over the past couple of years so that's kyle walker zinchenko the m word i don't really want to pronounce his name and Jao Cancelo as well and then i tried to kind of build a profile a fullback profile for manchester city around those players and again these are the metrics that i found that was fairly important for either manchester city or a metric that i found that Cancelo really excelled in over the last couple of years so with manchester city we noticed that they also like the use of inverted fullbacks which was kind of key when looking for a fullback as well they have to have some sort of experience as playing as an inverted fullback or just me believing that player is good enough to play in that role so what we can see here successful defensive actions what i should have done is put some of these in green in the areas that he really excels in but again it's very unlikely that you're going to find a fullback that is comparable with Jao Cancelo successful defensive actions he completes eight per 90 defensive duels 6.57 per 90 and he's fairly successful with that Possess possession adjusted interceptions he completes a fairly high number as well passes into the final third is an area where he really really excelled and it wasn't a fullback even comparable not even remotely forward passes similar as well but then again Jao Cancelo did complete the most passes in the Premier League and in the top five leagues in Europe if I am correct crosses 3.99 now take note of this because 3.99 is actually fairly high when comparing with other fullbacks across the top five leagues in Europe but also it's fairly high for someone that is playing as an inverted wingback so you can see that Manchester City's fullbacks aren't strictly there to invert they can also go out wide and put some crosses in now crosses doesn't necessarily mean just running down the pylon and whipping the ball in but Jao Cancelo doesn't always just cut inside he does have the opportunity or the license to run on the outside as well touches inside the box Jao Cancelo with 2.56 again nobody will compare with that and progressive runs 2.51 now these are what Manchester City's fullbacks do in general they do produce a high number with these metrics in general and we can see as well with the passes completed with Jao Cancelo he completes a lot especially with passes into the final first into the penalty area and with progressive passes but who can be that left back for Manchester City let's have a look Mark Cucurella is someone that is heavily linked with Manchester City and we can of course see why when it comes to successful defensive actions 9.55 defensive duels and possession adjusted interceptions we can see that Mark Cucurella is a very very solid defender when it comes to passes into the final third he is a fairly progressive passer we can see that with the forward passes as well and when you do split his passes and attempted with backward passes lateral passes and forward passes you can see that he generally likes to complete a lot of forward passes 
crosses 3.39 again fairly high but he's not as successful as Jao Cancelo he is getting 1.36 touches inside the box and he does complete 2.09 progressive runs per 90 as well now one must note Mark Cucurella did play some games as the left sided centre back in a back three as well so some of these stats can be affected because of that now looking at the key passes we can see fairly similar to Jao Cancelo not really on the same level but realistically he's not going to be he does complete a high number of passes into the final third passes into the penalty area crosses into the penalty area and progressive passes so Mark Cucurello someone that is heavily linked with Manchester City anyway and the next person for me David Rom from Hoffenheim this is a fullback that I I really like him. I do really like him. He played a lot of the games as a wing back other than a fullback in a back four. But regardless, he is a very, very tempting fullback for Manchester City to look at. Successful defensive actions. You can see he's not quite on the same level or he's not completing the same number as Jao Cancelo and Cucurella. Defensive duels and interceptions have also dropped. But again, he is a forward thinker when it comes to passes in possession. When he gets the ball, he does generally like to play forward passes. But when it comes to crossing, this is an area where David Rom really excels in. This kind of seems his speciality and he is fantastic at it. He is completing near enough seven crosses a game and he completes 43.42% which is a fairly high number, very high number in fact. And we can see with his passing stats here as well and we can see with his passing attributes from FBREF as well, very, very similar to Jao Cancelo. Just look at the passes into the penalty area and the crosses into the penalty area. Nobody really really compares he also plays a very high number of key passes and you can see just at the top there passes completed long he is completing a lot and also attempts a lot as well which isn't necessarily part of Manchester City's game but I did find that fairly intriguing he is also getting a very decent number of touches into the box 1.92 and progressive one and progressive runs at 1.68 so he's not as progressive with his runs as Jao Cancelo but he does like to get further forward as we can see from his heat map as well so out of Mark Cucurella and David Rome, as it's a defender, I'm more likely to go with Mark Cucurella and mainly because he does have that Premier League experience. But again, if Mark Cucurella falls through, David Rome is a defender who I certainly would be looking at if I was Manchester City. So that's that when it comes to finding players for Manchester City. In central midfield, I have picked Ishmael Benacer over Calvin Phillips, but as the fullback, I did pick Mark Cucurella over David Rome. And that is exactly who we signed in football manager so we didn't actually sign them i did use the pre-game editor and you can see that with the transfer fee here it is fairly low it is fairly low but we do have ishmael benesser we can see here he's player trace he comes deep to get the ball digs his tempo he dwells on the ball tries long range passes and he likes the ball played into feet so football manager you could say fairly got that one right and we also signed mark cucarella who just likes to get further forward but he's a very good defender on football manager so now this is the new manchester city squad we have kind of lined up already in a 4-3-3 and now we're just going to fit some of the players into their position so right back Edison now we've got a new left back we can put Jacques Cancelo as the right back Diaz as the right centre back Laporte Mark Cucurella as the holding midfield we're going to use Rodri Kevin De Bruyne as that right side of central midfielder as the left side of central midfielder just for the sake of it we are going to be putting our new central midfielder in Ishmael Benacer as the right winger Bernardo Silva the left winger it could be Jack Grealish it could be Phil Foden as the right winger it could also be Riyad Mahrez and up front of course Erlen Haaland. So now this is what the new Manchester City team is looking like currently. Of course the option is there to rotate for an example Bernardo Silva can go back into central midfielder. Benacer can just put himself on the bench I guess and we can put Riyad Mahrez there. Julian Alvarez might have a couple games in where Phil Foden might have to drop or Phil Foden might have to play a couple games in central midfield. Best thing about Manchester City is their rotations and now I guess it's time to put some team instructions inside the tactic. So of course things are going to change for next season compared to last season. This is kind of what I drew out for Manchester City as their tactic from last season and now we can kind of look at this and we can see where we are going to be making our slight changes and number one our slight change is going to be Erlen Haaland now I don't I'm not quite convinced he's going to be a striker that just continuously stays on that last line of defense I still feel on the pep he has to link up with his team which is why I'm going to go with a deep line forward but 
on attack. Just behind them, Phil Foden, last season I had two inverted wingers on support, but this season I'm just going to have the left winger on attack. Now, this can be Phil Foden, but it can also be the new guy, Julian Alvarez as well. And the reason why is because now this winger is going to be on support, but Jao Cancelo can now be on attack. Now, he could do some natural underlaps and overlaps when it comes to Bernardo Silva, whereas this fullback might be a little bit more reserved than Jao Cancelo. When it comes to that Kevin De Bruyne role, of course, we're not going to give him anything else but the Mazala on attack. Now for Ishmael Benacer, last season, what happened a lot for Manchester City is the striker, the full snap will drop deep and then you have two runners dropping off or running off that striker, sorry. So you would have two, so you would have two attacking midfielders essentially in central midfield, but now things might change with Haaland. Haaland might also just be breaking forward, which is why now Benacer, he's going to be more of a box-to-box -box midfielder, so he still has the opportunity to break forward if Haaland does decide to drop, but if Haaland stays forward, we're going to have Kevin De Bruyne move forward, but Ishmael Benacer is going to kind of hold his position or roam around in that central midfield area. And this also allows for another tactical tweak where Phil Foden now might actually come inside a little bit more often and Cucurella can overlap. Though I did look for a wing back who I thought was capable as playing as an inverted wing back. I'm not too sure that Pep will give someone that responsibility, that role right away, which is why for Mark Cucurella, we are going to be using a wing back on support. For Laporte, we're going to be using a ball playing defender, Diaz, a central defender, and for Rodri, which is going to be using a defensive midfielder on support. And voila, here we have the roles all sorted. Now it's time for the tactical instructions. And for the tactical instructions, it's already completed. I've already completed it, cheeky bugger. So the mentality is on positive, attacking with fairly wide. For the approach play, we're still going to have both fullbacks or look to have both fullbacks make that underlapping run. But in case, in case Mark Cucurella finds himself high up on the left-hand side, we would want Foden to then make that underlapping run. Or it could be Benacer. Benacer could be the player making that underlapping run. We are also going to be playing out from the defence, the passing directness. I did start out with Mark Shorter, gradually, gradually just pumped it up to slightly shorter. You can leave it on You can leave it on Mark Shorter if the possession stats mean that much to you. For me, it didn't necessarily mean that much for me. I wanted just to be more attacking. I wanted to score goals and I wanted to win games on Football Manager. In the final third, we are going to be putting in low crosses and working the ball into the box in transition when the possession has been lost we're going to counter press and make counter movements when we have won the ball and when the goalkeeper is in possession he will distribute it to the center backs even again if you care about the possession numbers then you might want to use hold shape or not use any transitional instructions which is what i had when creating my positional play one i didn't have any transition instructions when we did win the ball back but for today again i just want to win and score goals which is why i am using counter out of possession now we're going to squeeze the pitch as much as possible we're going to force them outside use the offside trap trigger press much more often you can drop this down if you like to more often and we are going to be preventing that short goalkeeper distribution and that there that there wraps up manchester city's 22 23 tactics if they did sign mark cucarella and benacer again this might be very very similar if they did sign david rome and if they did sign calvin phillips in central midfield i would likely have use the exact same roles in this system let's play a game let's play a game we are now going to play a game against chelsea and see how this plays out so this is today's starting lineup edison in goal cancello as the right back cucarella as the left back diaz and stones at the back i believe laporte is injured rodri as the holding midfielder benacer as the box to box phil folden as that mazala as kevin de Bruyne is injured alvarez on the left hand side silva on the right and harlan up top let's get stuck in to this game his manchester city with a call Bernardo whips it in. Ruben heads the ball over the bar. Here is another corner. Who's whipping it in this? Oh, is it a corner? Where is the ball? Oh, Cucurella throws it long into the box. Here's Cucurella now. Plays it to Benacer. Back to Cucurella. The new guy's linking up Rodrigo. Outside of the box. Just lobs it over the bar. Here's Mason Mount now. Plays it forward for Chelsea. But Harlan collects the ball now. Is he going to progress with it? He, he, he stops. Oh, it's a lovely one too with Bernardo Silva though. Harlan slows the ball down. Or play down even. Rodri now. Jao Cancelo cutting inside. Here's Julian Alvarez. Holds it up. Waits for Cucurella. Benacer now. Tries in towards the box. Kante intercepts but it falls back to Benacer. Thiago Silva heads it out. Rodri. Just runs wide with the ball. Jao Cancelo now. Is he going to whip the ball? Oh, that's a lovely ball and that's a lovely goal. Erlen Haaland. 
And it's 1-0 to Manchester City against Chelsea. Harlem with the goal. What a ball from um, Cancelo here, though. What a ball. I'm not even sure what this centre-back is doing. He's not even looking the right way, Pavard. Pavard is not even looking the right way. And it's 1-0 to Manchester City. And as we can see here, oh, Chelsea just got their first shot with an XG of 0.02. It is not looking great for Chelsea. Here's Haaland with a free kick. He's on free kick duties, is he? Oh, he scored it as well! It's Haaland. There's no KDB, but don't worry. Don't worry. We do have Haaland. What a goal. I mean, he, he's taking free kicks. This is just absolutely mental. And it's 2-0 to Manchester City. It, can it be free? Or oh, Chelsea going to grab one just before half time. Jao Cancelo should be doing better there against Mason Mount. Cuts inside and he kicks it over the bar. It's half time. 2-0 to the... Oh, almost at the Gooners. 2-0 to Manchester City. And we can see here, Manchester City are still putting pressure on. So the second half has died down a little bit. Let's make a sub. Let's make a sub. We have brought on Rihad Mahrez and we have brought on Ilkay Gundogan. Here's a throw-in though. Cancelo to Mahrez. Plays it to Cucurella. I mean, he just drove it. He just drove it into the box. I'm not sure if he actually aimed for anyone, but here's Cucurella again. Diaz and Benacer. The new guys are settling in very, very nicely here at Manchester City. Pep, if you want someone to make your sign signings, call me up. I almost thought Stones was going to lose that. Here's Benacer. What a ball to Gundogan. Please get an assist here. Oh, Benacer should be getting that. Ah, come on, Gundogan. That would have been amazing. Conor Gallagher coming on for Chelsea. Is the game going to end 2-0? It looks like it and it is it is manchester city 2 chelsea nil harlan grabbing both goals scoring a great free kick as well but that there wraps up that game but now let's look at some of the end of season results so here we are in may at the end of the season and as you can see manchester city have won the league with 94 points they continue to dominate but let's check all of the competitions as this game or this season was simulated so the computer was in charge of everything so in the premier league we won that with 94 points from Friendly Cup, we won that. Champions League, we were the winners, beating Real Madrid 1-0 in the final. So we beat Mr. Champions League themselves. Edison getting out of the match, though he made one save. Yeah. Okay then. Emirates FA Cup, we got knocked out in the fourth round by Everton. In the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the third round by Aston Villa. I mean, Pep won't be happy with that whatsoever. But let's whiz through some of the stats as well. Manchester City scoring 106 goals with the most shots for. For the possession, we did come in second, so it was fairly high, but not the highest. 54% Chelsea with the most. Looking at the dribbles made, uh, Manchester City even not in the top eight, but then again, we weren't using run at the defence. Um, best pass completion as well Manchester City in fourth place defensively we did have the second most clean sheets and conceded the second fewest now looking at the player stats or player statistics Harlan with 36 goals this season with the assist Bernardo Silva with 20 Jack Grealish having a better season with 16 and Harlan with 12. Most shots for Harlan coming in second. Harlan with the most man of the match awards. What a signing he is. Key passes. Bernardo Silva with 152. Jack Grealish with 105. This is probably the only time that I've been Manchester City and haven't seen Kevin De Bruyne here. Best pass completion. Ruben Diaz and Laporte in the top eight. Most tackles won. Cancelo is in the top eight. Most dribbles made. Kyle Walker is in seventh place with 83. Most dribbles, uh, most clean sheets. Edison joint with Allison on 21. And for the fuse conceded, Edison drops down into fifth place with 26. Lastly, before we end the video, let's see how the team performed. Well, as a team, <laughs> Harlan with 50 goals in all comps, De Bruyne with 22 and Jack Grealish with 11. The only three players that hit double figures with gold. Looking at the assist, Bernardo Silva with 27, Grealish with 22, Kevin De Bruyne with 15. What a season for, what a season for Kevin De Bruyne and what a season for Harlan with 14 assists as well. How did the new guys do? Let's just clear this team. It looks ugly. So here we are, Mark Cucurella. He's average rating throughout the whole season, a 6.95, which is fairly average. He got four assists with two goals. Ismail Benacer, he got an average rating of 6.89. So our new signings aren't actually doing fantastically well here. He did only play 15 games with one, or he started 15 games with one goal, one assist. So those are the two guys that we signed. Harlan is a Pep Guardiola signing with 7.76 average rating. Julian Alvarez with a 6.93 average rating, though he only started nine games, getting three goals and and free assist but unfortunately that wraps up this video i hope you guys have enjoyed it i'll see you guys soon stay safe peace out and also let me know in the comments 
If you want to see more of this, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment. See you guys later.